Theodore Roosevelt, often called Teddy, was born in New York City, New York on October 27, 1858 to Theodore Roosevelt Sr. and Martha Stewart, Mitty Bullock. Theodore was a frail boy who suffered from asthma and other ailments. For weeks on end, he was forced to keep to his bed, and he often missed out on the rough and fun activities most boyhoods enjoy. Instead, he spent his time reading, and by the time he was out of the nursery age, books had become companions to him and comforters in pain. He went to school briefly, but his health prevented him from regularly attending. Due to the limitations caused by his health, it became prudent that tutors and governesses gave him an uneven elementary education, and by the time he left for college, he was still a frail boy burdened by his ailments. From the books he read, he became fascinated by stories of great heroes. He especially enjoyed tales of adventure and excitement. His biggest hero was his father, who he was constantly trying to measure up to. Determined to be like his father and the heroes from his books, he sought to overcome his weakness. He took up boxing and worked out relentlessly. He often found joy in adventuring outdoors, discovering all the insects and animals around his house. This led to his desire to go to college and become an animal naturalist. In 1876, he attended Harvard University, where he participated in many undergraduate activities, including boxing, fencing, football, and even acting. Shortly after graduating, he married Alice Lee of Chestnut Hill, a girl who often was found in the same activities that he enjoyed. After losing interest in naturalism, he decided to go back to school, but this time to law school. He was no fan of the law and sought to make a change for the better. One of his first achievements was challenging a corrupt judge for his seat. He would go on to win by campaigning for an honest government. In 1880, Roosevelt's daughter, Alice Lee Roosevelt, was born on February 12, 1884. Tragically, two days later, the new mother died of an undiagnosed case of kidney failure that had been masked by the pregnancy. In his diary, Roosevelt wrote a large X on the page, and then, the light has gone out of my life. His mother, Mitty, had died of typhoid fever 11 hours earlier at 3 a.m. in the same house on 57th Street in Manhattan. This tragedy led him to seek solitude on a ranch that he purchased in North Dakota. While in North Dakota, he bred a great herd of cattle and was joined by his old friends Bill Sewell and Wilmot Dow. Together they built a house on the ranch and called it Elkhorn. He now enjoyed the rugged life of a ranchman, working on the roundup, riding for days on end after stray cattle, hunting over the bare prairies and up the rugged peaks. He finally had a rugged and tough body he sought as a young man. In 1886, politics called to him once more, this time as the Republican nominee for the mayor of New York City. He lost the race, but in the same year, he married his second wife, Edith Kermit Perot. In 1897, President William McKinley appointed him Assistant Secretary of the Navy, and he devoted his time to preparing for war with Spain, which he believed was inevitable. Roosevelt utilized the brief periods when he was acting secretary during his chief's absence to carry forward the policy which he deemed essential to national safety. Roosevelt's proactive measures helped to secure the much-needed coal and ships that ultimately enabled the U.S. Navy to destroy the Spanish fleet at Manila. When the war was nearing its end in 1898, Roosevelt resigned his position and offered his services to the president in raising the cavalry regiments which Congress authorized. He became lieutenant colonel and served under his friend Leonard Wood, a veteran from the Indian Wars. Early in May, the Rough Riders, as they were so nicknamed, began to gather from all parts of the country at San Antonio, Texas. The training was brief but thorough. Six weeks after the regiment was organized, it stood trained and equipped on the firing line outside of Santiago de Cuba. The Rough Riders got their first taste of battle in June 1898 at the Battle of Las Guasimas. Teddy led the center of the formation and revealed himself as a brave leader who stayed calm and offered sound judgment in the heat of battle. A week later, the Battle of San Juan Hill was fought, which later became known as the bloodiest battle of the war. Due to poor leadership by the commanding general, the Rough Riders were forced to hunker down while they waited for orders. One messenger after another was killed by the Spanish bombardment until at last the order arrived to charge. Theodore Roosevelt kicked his horse forward, leading the Rough Riders up the hill and through the tall grass directly at the Spanish army. As bullets flew by, men to his left and right fell, but the charge continued. As he reached defenses of barbed wire, he dismounted his horse, 
found a way through the barbed wire fence and continued the charge. He was an inspiration to all of his men that day, which ended in victory and a full Spanish retreat. Because of his bravery displayed at the Battle of San Juan Hill, Theodore Roosevelt would posthumously be awarded the Medal of Honor. At the end of the war, he returned to hero and once again a life of politics where he served as President McKinley's vice president. In 1901, at the death of President McKinley, Theodore Roosevelt became the 26th president of the United States. As president, he would accomplish many great things for the country, including becoming a trust buster, enacting the Pure Food and Drug Act, and perhaps one of his proudest achievements, the conservation of natural resources and extending federal protection to land and wildlife. Theodore Roosevelt would win his second term and at the conclusion of his service, decided to spend his free time to pursue his many adventurous interests, which took him around the globe. On October 14, 1912, while arriving at a campaign event in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Roosevelt was shot from seven feet away in front of the Gilpatrick Hotel by a delusional saloon keeper named John Fleming Shrink, who believed that the ghost of assassinated President William McKinley had directed him to kill Roosevelt. The bullet lodged in his chest after penetrating his steel eyeglass case and passing through a 50-page thick, single-folded copy of the speech titled Progressive Cause Greater Than Any Individual, which he was carrying in his jacket. Shrink was immediately disarmed, captured, and might have been lynched had Roosevelt not shouted for Shrink to remain unharmed. Roosevelt assured the crowd that he was all right and then ordered police to take charge of Shrink and to make sure no violence was done to him. As an experienced hunter and anatomist, Roosevelt correctly concluded that since he was not coughing blood, the bullet had not reached his lung. He declined suggestions to go to the hospital immediately and instead delivered a 90-minute speech. His opening comments to the gathered crowd were, Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know whether you fully understand that I have just been shot, but it takes more than that to kill a bull moose. Only after finishing his address did he accept medical attention. Theodore Teddy Roosevelt, despite a sickly youth, grew to be a great man, a brave hero of the Spanish-American War, and one of America's most adored presidents boldly emblazing him as a legend of the West. <laughs>